Hi, I'm Susan Taylor Brown. This is another episode in my series of finding free images online. And by free, I mean copyright free, in the public domain, okay for you to use, print out, modify, put in your art projects, and then turn around and sell that art project that you just created. So where are we going to go today? How about we visit the Library of Congress? You would not believe the number of archives that they have available online. They have been busy digitizing things for years and you could just spend hours and hours there taking trips back in time and looking at all these historical photographs and historical documents and some of them are completely free of copyright restrictions that you can go ahead and use in your work. Now I want to make one disclaimer here about copyright. I happen to be in the United States, so I am familiar with my copyright laws. I am not familiar with copyright laws throughout the rest of the world, so it is your responsibility as the artist, as the writer, as the person who is downloading these images. It is your responsibility to do your due diligence and know the laws within your country as to whether or not you can use any of these images. Each of the sites I take you to, you can go to their credits page, you can search for the word copyright and it will tell you more about the copyright restrictions within that collection and how they might or might not apply to you. So there are two ways that you can go exploring at the Library of Congress. You can go to their main page here and you can just start searching and you can click down this little drop down here. You can look for printed material and that's going to take you to a lot of items that are in the public domain but it's also going to take you to a lot of things that where you're either going to have to make sure to give credit or it's not available or you have to pay some money for it now there's nothing wrong with any of that but maybe you just want to go look for the free stuff okay so the library of congress has come up with this other really cool thing they have curated a lot of their archives into categories of items that are completely in the public domain and okay for you to use. Now you may or may not find something that works for you here but they do have a really nice selection here. So this is where you would go to is this website here and I will put a link down in the description box below but it is the free to use and reuse sets and they are encouraging people to come explore these various collections and see if there's something in here you can use. So let's just check out one of these collections. One of the things you will notice when you visit a lot of the government archives is that the pages might be slow to load. You're just going to have to take a deep breath, have a cup of coffee, and wait because there is so much activity happening on these websites that it just sometimes can take a while. So let's see if there's anybody in here that looks interesting to us. This is something I would always click on because it's people reading and I'm just always attracted to any photographs of people reading. So look at this. Isn't that beautiful? It's a nice size photo and so if you want to download it you can come right over here. Now they do have other options. You can get a humongous TIFF file, 146 meg. So be careful when you're looking over here to download and make sure you get something that you can handle. Uh, I would think a 5 kilobyte JPEG is not going to be enough. I would probably come up here and get the 73 meg file just because I want something that's going to print nicely. If you page down here, it's going to tell you all about when it was created between 1894 and 1901. It's a glass negative. And what does it tell you down here about the rights? rights and access you can click on this and it tells you this now I'm gonna say this again and again and they're saying that as well rights assessment is your responsibility you can't say oh I found it online oh I found it on Pinterest if you saw my last video you heard my rant about Pinterest Pinterest is not another word for public domain so it is up to you to take the responsibility to check out the rights sometimes it means you're free to use it sometimes it means you have to give credit and it's up to you to figure out how you're going to do that. If you're doing it in a journal, perhaps, then you're going to have to figure out whether you're going to put a credits page in the back of your journal that says, this is where I got a lot of these images. Here's a rabbit hole, and I will warn you about this because I have been there, done that, and got lost for days. Of course, we all know we see a link, we can click on it. This particular beautiful photograph 
is part of the prints and photographs division. It is an awesome place to go to. If you come over there, you are going to have so many options to search. You are going to have so many, your mind will be blown by what is over here. But you're going to have a lot more difficulty looking for things that are in the public domain or that are okay for you to use. I don't think the Library of Congress actually uses the word public domain that often. So to start with, I would probably stay within this free to use and reuse sets. Now here's another collection they have here. It's called Not an Ostrich. I think the idea was just unusual photographs. A cat with a Viking helmet on it. Very, very old cavalry. And one thing you have to be aware of when you are looking at things in these historical archives, you are going to find photographs that are perhaps not culturally correct by today's standards. This is part of our history, so don't get all ticked off when you see something that maybe um, rubs you the wrong way. They also have some travel posters. These are a lot of fun to use, and I have used some of these in my projects. So again, you would click on any picture, and then it's going to take you to a larger image. You want to see it closer, you can do this. And then to download, you're going to come over here on the left, and you make sure to click this. So if I just downloaded this one at 32 kilobytes, it's probably not going to be big enough for me to do very much for. So I would again click that drop down arrow and I would get a larger file. They have in their free to use and reuse classic children's books. How beautiful are these covers of these books? Look at this. Okay, so the thing about these children's books is you get not just the book cover, but you can actually download the entire book. So the three bears, it's a little bit different than downloading just an image because I don't think, yeah, you never get to the bottom where you will get that little drop down arrow over here. So when you see a children's book you like, you click through, click return to description, and now you have the option to do a couple things. So you can download it as a PDF, which you may or may not get image resolutions that you like. You can come over here and you can view this as HTML. And that's going to take you to a web page that's also going to show you the book. But now you're going to get that little drop down arrow. So you can come over here to the arrow and you can choose to download, but I believe that all that's going to get you is one page if you're doing it like this. So if you want the entire book, you're going to go through page by page, but when you do that and you come to your arrow again, you're going to get a larger size file and you're going to get really nice graphics that you can use. And then a third thing you can do is if you're on this page here, you can choose to download whatever page you're on here, you can download it here. I would probably come over here to look at it as the view as HTML. And then I would just go through the page, through the book page by page and I would download, I would not do a PDF. I, I would rarely ever download a PDF that I want to be able to print in any kind of a quality. I would come over here and I would choose TIFF and then I would go to the next page, come down here, do the drop down arrow, I would choose TIFF, and I would go like that to go through the entire book. So that's what I would do in order to download a complete children's book from this particular website. One of the other categories they had is baseball cards. Baseball season has started. Go Giants! We are big fans here in this house. And look at some of these great old baseball cards. This is, this is fabulous. I love these. I might make my son a baseball book one of these days with some of these old images. So again, just like anything else, you're going to come over here, you're going to click on the image, and it's going to tell you about the uh, about the image, and you can come over here and you can download it in the various sizes, and then if you want to go down a rabbit hole, 
you can click on any one of these links over here but remember once you get outside of this free to use and reuse collection that the Library of Congress has curated for you once you leave this part of the website then it's going to be doubly important for you to do the rights research to make sure that you are finding images that are okay for you to use. That is the Library of Congress free to use and reuse curated collection. They have done the hard work for you and put these together. If you have any questions about using this website or any of the other websites we're going to visit on this journey, let me know down in the comments and I will get back to you just as soon as I can. Next time we might go looking for some more modern photographs and images you can use or we might just fall down another vintage rabbit hole. If you're having trouble finding a particular image to use around a certain theme that you're working on, let me know down in the comments and I will see if I can help you track something down. Thanks so much for watching. Subscribe if you haven't already. Check out the rest of the videos in this playlist and I will see you next time. Bye for now.